بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء علومك برحمتك يا رحم الراحم الحمد لله في توفيق to continue our study of international relations in Islam based on Ayatollah Jawad Yamuli's book uh, I am in Stockholm for uh, three nights uh, we have a program here inshallah and before we start I want to also offer my condolences to you and to Imam of our time for the passing away of one of our great contemporary scholars Ayatollah Hassan Hassan Zadi Amuli Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alai who passed away in the age of 92 after several years of illness and he was really one of the exceptional scholars without any exaggeration and he was very deeply involved in spirituality and Irfan Nazari and Amali, theoretical and practical. He had great teachers. But also he was very much involved in studies. It's unbelievable how much he has put energy in studying not only normal sciences in the Hosea, like Fiqh, Usul, Kalam, you know, philosophy, Tafsir, but also Farsi literature, Arabic literature. He has done some amazing works on uh, literature. Even some of the historical books which were not compiled, he managed to compile them with the same uh, style. He also has done lots of tashi and tahqiq of important books, like for example, Kashful Murad that we use. Uh, is one of his you know, books that he has uh, managed to investigate all the you know, different versions, editions, etc. In mathematics, he was a great expert in uh, geometry and astronomy. So even he knew uh, French and English to some extent uh, for reading purposes. So he was very much uh, involved in studying, teaching, writing, m putting uh, footnotes, making comments, as well as being very uh, spiritual. Uh, Ayatollah Jabadi Amudi, who uh, has uh, spent uh, decade of time you know knowing him and some years you know they shared room with each other etc mm -hmm. uh, says so many important things about him I hope they get translated inshallah so we lost him and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, thank him uh, for all his services Allah is Shakur is very thankful and also I pray to Allah to preserve our remaining uh, scholars, uh, this generation of uh, scholars. Uh, many of them have passed away and we really need each of the remaining ones. May Allah give them, inshallah, long life. And we pray for our hosas to be able to uh, produce lots of uh, scholars like these uh, scholars inshallah uh, we very much in this age need these uh, scholars 
So I hope, inshallah, in the next few days we will be able to announce a program uh, on him, and we are trying to uh, arrange with some of uh, his closest students, inshallah, to see if we can have a program, inshallah, an online in English to talk more about him and know more about him, inshallah. Okay, we continue our study of international relations in Islam. And as you remember, uh, we are talking about the third level of unity, which is unity among all mankind. Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli first, in this part I mean, uh, says that it is only a universal religion such as Islam that can fulfill all the requirements for a universal law because it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and addresses all mankind if it was coming from a human mindset it was not able to be universal and go across all the times and all the cultures and all the races etc so having a monotheistic approach makes you universal makes religion universal makes law universal otherwise it would be not permanent and also would be more i'tibari and not takvini meaning that it would be more based on our assumptions our agreements and not on existential foundations therefore they can change so we need to go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion which is like a rope wa'tasamu bihablillah jami'an wa la tafarraq but this doesn't mean that if someone doesn't believe in faith and you know submission to God we cannot have unity this is to say that the best chance for universal unity is if we follow a monotheistic approach if we adopt a monotheistic attitude it's the best chance but this monotheistic faith has place for unity with people of no faith as well this is very important so if people accept this faith this approach even if it is from other traditions it would help as all answers ya ayyuhalladhina amanu udkhulu fis-silmi kaf but if they don't or for the time being they are not okay still we have great ground for unity of all types of human beings in this approach so this is a kind of brotherhood and a kind of equity among human beings. He refers to some uh, evidence. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran when talks about Prophet Salih, Prophet Shu'ayb and Prophet Hud, he explains that the relation between these prophets and their nations who were not believers who were not muwahid was a relation of brotherhood for example allah says wa ila thamud akhahum saliha surah araf verse 73 wa ila madyana akhahum shu'ayba surah araf verse 85 وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودَىٰ Surah Araf, verse 65. You, you see, Allah, when refers to the relation, says, 
these prophets were brothers of their nations this is why in some of the lectures you know I have said that the only way a muballigh can be successful is when he considers the people that he is trying to help as his people qawmihi qawmi like rasulullah in the battle of uhud said allahumma ahdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun although they had killed hamza still he says oh allah please guide my people they don't know and they should see him as their brother akhahum as their brother if this relation is there then inshallah things can improve but if it's a stranger or enemy or i don't know someone who's going to you know fight them or you know looks at them with you know hatred or dislike is not going to work then he says that amirul mu'minin alayhi salam in his letter to malik ashtar also referred to this human brotherhood human fraternity when he said wa ash'ir qalbaka rahmata lir-ra'iyya wal mahabbata lahum wal lutfa bihim this is in the letter to malik ashta letter 53 of nahjul uh, balagha imam says to malik let your heart sense mercy for people ra'iyya for the nation, for the subjects of the state. Love for them. Kindness. Do not be like a wild animal. That look at the people as you know his prey that wants to eat why because people are one of the two either a brother in faith or similar to you in creation a brother in humanity this sentence is very famous and as I said before it is also uh, put on the wall of uh, UN headquarters in Geneva then Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli refers to some examples from the life of the Prophet Muhammad and some of his sayings one of his sayings, for example, is that he says, We had this in Islamic belief system also. So Rasulullah says, people are like teeth of comb, equal. You need all these teeth on the comb so that you can use it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And they are all, you know, level and you know equal some might be bigger some might be smaller th but you see if the top is the same Rasulullah also said that example of people is like those who are on the board of a sheep and if one of them wants to make a hole and reach water says for example I'm thirsty I want water it would affect all the people who are on the board and uh, they need to uh, stop this person in order to save him and save themselves and this is the example of Amr al-Ma'roof and Nahya and al-Munkar so Ayatollah Jawadi says here the issue of Amr al-Ma'roof and Nahya al-Munkar is mentioned in a universal way is not regional or temporary if 
Zulm, for example, is going to start somewhere in the world. It's going to affect all humanity. And today, more than any other time, maybe in the history, we see how we are all connected. If there is a virus, it spreads. If there is war and tension, somehow all people are affected, you know, with the uh, waves of refugees, etc. So we are very much understanding today and maybe more in future that how much we are connected uh, with each other. The third example from Prophet, he says, is about uh, the way the Prophet forgave people of Mecca after the conquest of Mecca, after Fath of Mecca. And he said, Even someone like Abu Sufyan, who was involved and indeed leading many wars against Islam, Rasulullah gave him aman, protection, and also said whoever goes to his house would be safe or be in their own houses, for example, etc. But house of Abu Sufyan also was a place that was considered as a safe place. He didn't kill them, he didn't Imprison them, imprison them, he didn't punish them. So, this is the way he treats uh, people of even no faith and people who were not only had no faith, but his enemies, enemies of Islam. He refers to a story from uh, Sheikh Kulaini al Kafi that once. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the battles it seems that was the battle of Zatul Raqqa uh, a flood came and uh, made a barrier between the Prophet and the Muslim army Prophet was somewhere and with, because of this flood came he was separated one of the enemies thought this is a good time to go and kill the Prophet because he's alone. So he went with his sword and stood on the body of the Prophet and said that, who is going to save you? If I want to kill you, who is going to save you? Man yunjika minni, ya Muhammad. Rasulullah said, Rabbi wa Rabbuk, my Lord and your Lord, is my Lord who is also your Lord, he is going to save me. And then this person, uh, when he wanted to attack, he fell down and Rasulullah managed to take the sword from him and sat close to his body or jealous Allah Sadra and said Man yunajika minni or yunjika enja and tanjia both can be used. Naja yanju means to be safe is lazim but if Allah and Tafil Mutati who is going to save you from me? This man said Muhammad. He was very clever and also was aware of the generosity and nobility of the Prophet. He didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, or because he was mushrik, he had a protestic idea. Certainly was not happy to say Allah. So he said, your generosity and karam. And the Prophet left him. And he said, Allah is better and Akram. So, you see the Prophet, the way he treats people, even an enemy who wanted to kill him, is based on values 
which are not selective. This is what I want to emphasize on. A Muslim who follows the example of the Prophet has to show karam, generosity, kindness to all people. Yes. Amir al Mumin says that we do all possible things, we do our really best not to kill anyone, not to harm anyone, everything be based on words, conversation, mo'eza, etc. If nothing works and the enemies of the truth want to eradicate the truth and kill etc then the last resort might be using force using sword he says the last treatment medicine is to burn you know sometimes some injuries uh, cannot be healed by anything unless to burn them so that they can be healed otherwise they keep bleeding and become infectious etc Rasulullah sallallahu sallam never looked as wo at war as a preference or even as an option It was really, really an emergency way to reduce and keep to the minimum the harm. So he says it's like when there is a cancerous, you know, part in the body that the only thing is operation sometimes then he tries to mention some of the teachings in Islam that are very important and very actually helpful for having peaceful coexistence with all people including mushrikeen and kuffar and mulhideen polytheists, atheists, infidels uh, and he says it will become clear that Dar Islam Sol Asalat Darat Najang, as we said before, peace is the main thing, not war. And peace is based on Qist and Adl equity social justice one of these things that Islam teaches us is to be loyal to our promises and contracts and covenants treaties in the discussion about Wafa in Akhlaq of Hose we had several sessions on Wafa and over there we explained one important aspect of Wafa is Wafa Ibn Ahd It's very important. Um, one of the key ethical teachings of Islam is Wafa bil Ahd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu awfu bil ugood. O those who believe, act upon your contracts. Then he has a detailed discussion about Aqd. Uqud is plural for Aqd. Aqd means to tie. But here means to promise or to make a treaty. So Allah says you must be loyal to what is ma'qud. Means what is promised by two sides to be uh, kept as a treaty or as a kind of contract uh, because this ayah starts with ya ayyuhal ladina amanu 
So he has a nice point here. He says, in Madani chapters of the Quran, only three chapters start with Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. Surah Ma'idah, Surah Mumtahana, Surah Hujurat. These are the only th Madani surahs which start with Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. And then inside Surah Ma'idah, we have 16 times Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. And he says in the Quran normally Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu is used when afterwards a difficult task is mentioned or something that may look as if it's not something that you can cope with. It may look. Uh, of course, you know, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu is for, uh, addressed for believers, not uh, those who lack faith. For example, Allah says, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu Kutaba Alaykum Usiyam in Surah Baqarah. Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu Kutaba Alaykum Ulqasas again in Surah Baqarah, verses 183, 178. So Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu normally is used for this kind of things. But there is a uh, kind of also uh, a special kindness that Allah says Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu uh, so he says it's like for example if uh, a teacher says to a student that you are an excellent student you get very good results in your exams so you should also try to have good akhlaq and say you are a very good ex a student you're an excellent student this is a kind of recognition of the good quality of that person and then you can build upon it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when he wants to give us some uh, you know, instruction which may not be easy, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina, amen. But the beauty of saying to us, Ya ayyuhal ladina, amen, removes any pain. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, لَذَّةُ مَا فِي النِّدَى أَزَالَ تَعْبَ الْعِبَادَةِ وَالْعَنَى The pleasure of what is in this address, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا removes the tiredness or difficulty of worship and uh, you know, tiredness and difficulty of worship. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, awfu bil uqut. This shows it's a requirement of imam and something important. It doesn't mean that kuffar are not responsible. They are also responsible. Uh, we have this rule that al kuffar have responsibility for both usul and furu'ah. Not only they should believe in tawheed and nubuwa, etc., they should believe also in furu'ah. So this is why uh, even Kuffar would say, Lam nakun nut'imul miskin, lam nakun minal musallin. So they would uh, admit and they would know that these are problems. It's not that just they didn't believe in the Allah and the hereafter. It's also a problem that they didn't perform their takalif, practical takalif. In any case, everyone has to keep his promise and be loyal. But in particular, mu'minin are expected to... This loyalty, this commitment, to promises and treaties is very important for universal coexistence, peaceful coexistence. And everyone should observe this. Includes This also includes the covenant that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, Ayatollah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, Javadi Amuri says that that side maybe is more important or because part of it is kalami. We all have a promise uh, 
uh, that we gave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam an la ta'abudu shaitan. So there's a misaq between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should keep that misaq as well. But then also there is faqhi wafa bil ahd for practical things that we have committed ourselves and we have promised. All of them are needed. If the other party is not observing and committing to their promises, then the situation may change. But as long as they are happy, we should not break. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ Surah Tawbah, verse 7. فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ As long as they are mustaqim, they are persistent, you should also be persistent. You should not be the one who breaks. Then, he has a discussion about aqd. And he says, sometimes there is a contract, for example, being Bay, buying and selling, marriage, I don't know, hiring, renting, these are different uqud. You know, in fiqh we have uqud and iqa'at. Uqud have two parties, iqa one party. Uh, but what happens is that when someone buys or sells, uh, in reality, n nothing is changed. This is etibar. We say, okay, now you are the owner and you can use it. But this subject of this bay and shara has not changed. But sometimes it is real and taqween is existential. And he says this is in two cases. One is in logic between subject and predicate. There is aqdul haml. When we say, for example, this person is an author, in reality also this person is an author in the outside world is this person is also an author if this tr is a true statement the second is and that is when you believe in what you say if you believe in what you say this is also real so he makes this beautiful point as i said many times i told jawad yamuli has mashallah lots of uh, good observations about uh, connections between things. Uh, so, going back to our main discussion, what we said today is that for having a universal unity among human beings, having a monotheistic approach very much helps. And even if other parties don't believe in that, when we are equipped with that, it prepares us for this. Maybe they have more difficulty than us, in being able to extend our love to them, our kindness to them. Or maybe through their fetra they can find this. Uh, we said that Islam uh, has this potential, great ground for universal unity. We mentioned to some examples from the life of the Prophet ﷺ, to some sayings of Amir al and then we said one of the important teachings of Islam that can be a basis or one of the basis for universal unity is al-wafa bil uqud to be loyal to your promises, your treaties. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our ulama, in particular Ayatollah Jawad Yamuli and to bless the soul of Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh Amuli and to enable us to understand Islam properly and practice it and inshallah share it. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.